Dear citizens, as we begin to sign off on what has been a long and arduous election campaign, and as we move toward casting our ballots, we wish to thank all of you for the discipline you have displayed and for the embracing support you have shown to our policies and programs, which we have ruled out to make our federation a better federation and to improve and better the lives of all of the people of this beloved nation. We are meeting at a time in which external shocks, as well as domestic fiscal mismanagement, present us with a wide scope of challenges that call for new and innovative approaches in forging economic policies and relief. Throughout our time in government, and indeed, throughout this very grueling campaign, the People's Action Movement and the Concerned Citizens Movement have been determined to tackle the issues frontally, but always on the side of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. In the last few months, we have strengthened our one movement and we have given impetus to the imperatives of solidarity, cooperation, and partnership in order to fight for a better way for this nation. It is that strength of cooperation and solidarity that has sustained us through a campaign built on honesty and transparency and engagement with you, the citizens. It is that strength of partnership that will see us victorious at the polls on August 5th and enable us to immediately get to work to address the economic shortfalls and enhance the standard of living that is plaguing individuals and families across this nation. That same collective strength will help in the delivery of the economic, social, and political benefits that our people expect and rightfully deserve. In the context of our common ambition, we must take bold and decisive action in areas of serious concern to bring relief to citizens across a number of social sectors in the short term, even while we have outlined longer term plans to get us to sustainable development and growth. Our inclusive policies embrace every sector of our collective community and quite obviously, based on varying needs, some sectors will receive more. Our Jobs Now program is intended to alleviate acute youth unemployment and will see us making the single largest investment in public infrastructure, which will, in the immediate, see work in the construction industry, addressing the Federation's most urgent infrastructure build and repair needs in facilities, such as a new hospital and school, and repairing existing facilities improving parks and playing fields, fixing roads, and building houses. This will generate approximately 2,900 jobs. We will invest 100 million in the Dream Fund to create new businesses and build a new generation of entrepreneurs, all of whom are required to hire employees. This program will generate 2,200 jobs. We will also introduce a subsidized employee wage program under the Jobs Now Plan to help existing businesses find and hire new talent. Hundreds of medium to longer term jobs will be created in tourism, agriculture, technology, culture, and the arts, and the service sector. Job creation through entrepreneurship and empowerment will be the drivers to our medium-term plan for economic recovery. And while we focus on job creation for those who are able to work, we are not forgetting our brothers and sisters who by virtue of age or ability are unable to earn their own way. For our elderly citizens, our diamonds, we have articulated the need to protect their standard of living and to bring immediate relief in these very challenging economic times. Our national health insurance will include payment subsidies for
for essential drugs for the elderly suffering from severe chronic illness. Our diamonds will be able to access support with in-home help to nurse aides and volunteers who assist with health, personal, and domestic needs through our roving care program. That program will also be supported by retired persons who still have so much to contribute. For the broader social sectors, we have outlined our program to provide grants for home ownership to first-time homeowners under 35 years old, as well as to provide soft fiscal resources for those wishing to engage in house repair, improvement, and development. We will also embark on building 1,000 houses in five years for low-income and vulnerable individuals and families. On the issue of energy and the escalating price of this very vital commodity, immediate emergency relief will be delivered to the vulnerable population. Our plan for energy relief is inclusive, digital, green, and sustainable. It is unacceptable in this modern era to allow any form of energy poverty to take root among our citizens. Energy is critical to education, healthcare, technological advancement, and even to maintain a basic standard of living. As an urgent necessity, PAM and CCM, once in government, will issue a one-time grant to low-income households that qualify to totally erase any amount they currently owe to Skellig in St. Kitts or Nevlek in Nevis. In addition, these households will receive a stimulus payment of $100 per month toward their electricity bill for a period of five months in the first instance and to be periodically reviewed. We will create a green stimulus package where businesses and households will be incentivized to convert to solar energy. Companies and homeowners can sell excess power back to the grid thereby putting money into their pockets or reinvesting back into their business. Additionally, government will ensure that all government buildings and new government-built homes are equipped with solar panels so these households will have little to no monthly electricity bills. In the area of domestic energy, consumption, all 20-pound gas cylinders will be capped at $25 the 100-pound cylinders will be capped at $120. We will freeze gasoline prices at $14 EC per imperial gallon, a savings of $4 per gallon from its current price of $18. This will put more money back into the pockets of all categories of drivers, including those who ply the roads commercially as part of their trade, such as taxi, and bus drivers. In telecommunications, we have commenced discussions with telecommunications regulators within the region to address several key areas, such as establishing universal service. For us here in the Federation, this means urgent attention to ensuring better connectivity and telecommunication service on Nevis. We will also work with regional partners to lower cell phone rates and abolish roaming charges in a region that prides itself on promoting regional integration. Citizens, these are just an overview of the measures we intend to implement. And it is against these programs and others that you can and will hold us accountable. You have had an opportunity to see members of PAM and CCM in action in government until that opportunity was squandered by a reckless, power-hungry man not interested in you, but using you and your resources to look after himself and those closest to him. We, on the other hand, have always been about putting people first, and that remains our abiding commitment. Your priorities are our priorities and our promise. 
we have encapsulated our covenant with you, the people. But our overachieving philosophy of humanitarianism, empowerment, and people first for national development can only become public policy if you, dear citizens, subscribe to what PAM and CCM is positing as pathways to development and improved living standards. I urge you to analyze, interrogate us if you need to, and make an informed decision. And when you do so, reach out to your friends, families, neighbors, and those whom you employ to implore them to go to the polls to cast the individual ballots for PAM and CCM this election day. You are the indispensable part of this transformative initiative. And I call upon you to be disciples of this new and bright future for St. Kitts and Nevis. We recognize that it is only through working together and with your support in this, the fierce urgency of now, that we will realize the change we wish to see. The campaign is not over. There is still time for all of us, all of you, to move resolutely, to join our one movement and meet us at the moment where the future says goodbye to the past. Together, we will usher in a new day and embark on true people-centered governance with increased focus on communication and dialogue, civic participation, and more active involvement of youth and women in all aspects of nation building. Together, we will promote empowerment, increase employment, and embark on sustainable development, adhering to the firm principles of equality, inclusivity, tolerance, respect, and a fair share for all. The time for action is now. This is the people's moment.